In this segment, I'm going to continue looking at graphics mode. And specifically in this segment, we're going to take a look at using the vector shapes tool and the reshape tool. So if I click on the little arrow, or I guess the little triangle that's in the bottom right hand corner of the tool, it will fly open and it shows me that there are options for this tool. So the options are basically rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, graph paper, and spiral. So let's start with the rectangle. And so I'll just move up a little bit and go ahead and click and drag to create a rectangle. And so as long as I hold my mouse down, I can keep changing the shape of this rectangle. And when I let go of my mouse, it fills that shape in or it completes the shape. And basically the colors that it comes up in are the last colors that I created for my last object. So right now you can see that I'm set for a light blue fill and no outline. Now if you want to have an outline, you'd simply come to your outline, fly out, and choose to have an outline. So maybe I'll have it add an outline to this. And if you wanted a different colored fill, you could just come to the fill tool and choose to have a filled outline and choose from your color dockers to have whatever, a red fill with a black outline. It's up to you. Now at the top, the tool options menu, these are specific to this rectangle. And you'll notice that these tool options will change depending on what tool you use and what vector object you select. So for example, here we have the XY coordinates. That's sort of the distance that this vector is from the center of the page. We have the size of the vector. So for example, right now my vector is 3.4 wide by 1.5 tall. And if I wanted to specifically change it to be, I don't know, four wide, I could do that. And when I hit enter, it makes it wider. And I can also change these things by a percentage if I wanted to. And notice here I have a little lock. Whoops, I need to, I don't know what I did. I selected my vector and yeah, my vector was not selected, I guess. So anyway, I don't know exactly sure what I clicked on there. I wanted to show you about the lock though, because when this object is locked, it means that if I change its size, it will maintain the proportion. So for example, if I change the size to five now, it'll also make it wider and taller at the same time. And if I make it unlocked and then change it to be, oh, I don't know, s let's make it smaller, three, it's still gonna keep the height the same. It didn't, it only changed the width. So that's the difference between having it locked and unlocked. Now this is your ability to rotate your vector. So I could rotate the vector if I wanted to. This is for flipping, um, flip horizontally versus flip vertically. Now this is my corner options and I have three different corner options but before I show them what I maybe need to do is create some corners because I have right now very perfect corners so to do that I would need to choose reshape this vector object and when I choose reshape all four corners are highlighted and if I click on one of those corners right now and click and drag you'll see that it rounds them now when I let go it's finished and for example, now you can see that we've got the rounded corners. Now, now if I change the corner style from um, this curved corner to this style here, scalloped corner, you can see the difference. And here I can change to, um, I guess, like a capped corner, basically. So these are the different corner styles. And so anyway, the way I created those was using this reshape vectors. Now, when I when I'm in the reshape vector mode, I can shape all four corners, but I can also just shape one corner at a time. So if I wanted to have, um, you know, one corner different than the next, I can do that. So you can select all of the corners to reshape or specifically just choose one corner to reshape and reshape, you know, just specifically that corner. So I should reshape the top without reshaping the bottom is basically how it works. So that's reshaping a vector of a rectangle. Now why don't I go ahead and start a new object. And so we'll create this time an ellipse. So I click and drag and when I let go it fills it in. And notice same as the last object. Filled it in red with a black outline. And so now I have my ellipse selected and 
you can see the tool options have changed and they're similar to the rectangle with the XY coordinates and the size and the percentage and the lock um, the rotate but now here instead of corner options I have some ellipse options like a full ellipse or I could create a pie shape and I could create like an arc only and so for example if I go to the pie shape if I choose reshape that's my ability to change the shape of the pie so and I have some mathematical settings that I could use here to control the shape of the pie and I could use this to control um, like basically reverse or mm, invert the selection so just have this piece of the pie versus having the rest of the pie and so um, lots of different choices why don't we go ahead and create the next type of object style which is going to be a polygon and when I create a polygon I get some um, different tool options at the top so for example I've got a five-sided polygon if I want to create a six-sided polygon or a seven-sided polygon or an eight-sided polygon I can make that change here and when I go to reshape on the polygon it gives me the ability to change the actual nodes of the polygon to create sort of different styles of shapes so yeah now let's see now remember I'm creating vectors but at any time if you decide that you want one of your vectors to be created to embroidery you just simply come over here and say convert selected object to embroidery and you can see now um, just a little bit outside my embroidery hoop I'll just turn that off but I've created one two three vector shapes and I've also created one or two pieces of embroidery so because that vector that I just created has um, an outline you can see that it created the fill and the outline and they became two actually separate objects which I could therefore make modifications to um, you know as an example I can select the fill background open up the object properties convert it from a weave fill to be let's say an embossed fill so you can see how it works so we'll go back to graphics mode and keep creating graphics a little bit here um, we've created the polygon why don't we create the star so I'll go ahead and create a little star I'm just gonna move over to the side there's my star in this case my options are things like the number of points on the star so if I want to turn the number of points up I can um, this is the sort of percentage of the star that becomes the star point and so for example if I change that number to be a smaller number I get a smaller amount of my star point and so that's how that works and let's see a couple more shapes um, I didn't fully learn about the graph paper I, I can see how it works uh, if I just zoom out a little bit and draw um, a little graph paper here you can see that it creates the different cells of a graph paper and I assume that I could change the colors or outlines of these graph papers um, I'm not sure how that applies to embroidery but this is also for doing graphics work now the final one I found was kind of fun it's called the spiral and again you left click and drag to create your spiral and your tool options become things like the number of rows of spirals so I could have um, a more simple spiral by just going with let's say three and then if I draw another one you'll see that it only has three rows on the spiral and we have um, different sort of spiral shape options and a slider to give you um, like different ways that you can modify the shapes of your spiral and if you go in and reshape them then you can also reshape them and in this case we actually have vectorized lines uh, maybe I'll zoom in over that and show we'll be coming to this again um, but the idea is here when I go reshape on these spirals so for example if I mouse over top of this node it gives me the arrows that create that node and so to be able to change the shape of it I need to move the arrows around and they can be longer or shorter the longer they are the more they affect the shape afterwards shorter they are the less they affect the shape afterwards and as you can see that's my ability to change the shape of this little spiral object and maybe if I took that spiral object and created it a little fatter so a four-point outline and then said convert this to embroidery you'd see that it turns into a little piece of embroidery so that's a segment about using the basic vector shape tool and the vector reshape tool and now I'm going to come back and we'll talk about using um, the drawing modes to create your own vector shapes.